All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to connect your PlayStation 4 controller to your Windows PC using DS4 Windows as your primary driver so you can play all of your favorite games using your favorite controller. I will say right now, you save yourself a lot of time and effort if you just go out and buy yourself a cheap Xbox controller, especially if it's on sale. Otherwise, let's jump in here. So if you Google DS4 Windows, I'll also put the links to these in the video description so you get to the right website. You'll see a few different results. Uh, this one here at the top is unrelated to the actual developer. I don't know who makes this website. Uh, the one you're actually looking for that's trustworthy is the one on GitHub from Ryochan7. Go ahead and open up that bad boy. And we're going to need to download a sum total of three things to get this working today. So the first thing we're going to want to download is the .NET 8 desktop runtime. That's the framework from Microsoft that makes this bad boy function. The second thing we're going to download is DS4 Windows itself. Make sure you grab the x64 zip version here at the top. And we'll just save that to that same folder. And then the last thing we need is the Vision Bus driver from Nefarious Software Solutions. Go ahead and once again find the GitHub link from Nefarious. Vision bus. And then over here, you only need the most recent version, which is right here. There's only one, can't miss it. Once you have all of those downloaded, we're going to open up the folder that they're all in because they're all having a party in here and we're invited. And we're going to install them starting with the Windows runtime, then Vision bus. Then we're going to open up the DS4 Windows. Uh, these other two programs are pretty simple and straightforward. They just have a pop up window that runs you through. A quick installation guide. Uh, the .NET framework might require you or might encourage you to restart your computer. Uh, if it does, go ahead and do that. I've already got these installed, so I really don't necessarily need to run through them again. I'm just showing you each individual pop-up so you know what they look like. They're really just a standard installation wizard. Go ahead and install both of these. And then once you're done, we're going to open up the DS4 Windows file. We're going to extract it with either WinRAR or WinZip or 7-Zip to a file of the same name, just to make sure things stay nice and tidy and not exploding all over our folders. Then I'm going to open this up, and in this main folder here, there's a little icon that's all rainbowy called DS4 Windows that says it's an application. This is what we're going to need to get all this stuff working. So give that a double click to open it, and if everything is installed correctly, you should see this window. It'll ask you if you want to install DS4 Windows in the program folder that it's already in or in your app data folder. DS4 Windows is prone to breaking or freaking out and having like problems once in a while. It's easier to redo all of this setup if you have to by putting it in the program folder. That way, all you have to do is delete the folder and re-extract DS4 Windows and you can just start from scratch again if you have to. So we're going to click on the program folder. And that's going to open up this other fancy window that says Enable Devices Mapper Support. The easiest way to think about this screen is this enables support for other controllers if you want to use more than your PlayStation 4 controller. DS4 is the PlayStation 4 controller, DualSense is the PlayStation 5, the Switch is the Switch Pro controller, Joy-Cons are Joy-Cons, and you can also, with an additional DS HID Mini driver, you can also use a PlayStation 3 controller. I'll show you how to do that as well with all these different controllers, but not in this tutorial. For PlayStation 4 controllers, just leave this first one checked and then click close. Then DS4 Windows will open and it'll be like Larry. Larry, my buddy, my pal, my friendo, I don't see any controllers plugged in. And that's because I don't have any of them plugged in because I'm a wild crazy man and I'm going to plug one in right now which is you may or may not hear the noises. And as I plug it in, it will appear here in this list of controllers. This, in theory, can handle up to eight controllers. In practice, I've maybe gotten two to work with this before it starts to freak out, and it really just depends on your computer. And really, basically, right now, you're good to go. You don't really need to do anything else. You don't really need to set anything else up. Once you see this here, you can play any of your games as long as you leave window, you know, DS4 Windows 
either minimized in the system tray or just open on your desktop, it'll function as a driver so you can play your games. Now, there is one little caveat to that, and that is your computer is going to think that this is an Xbox 360 controller because that's how it works. It tricks your computer into thinking this is an Xbox controller because that's the controller that most games have drivers or compatibility for on the PC. It's not because they don't want to show you PlayStation buttons, it's because in a lot of cases they can't. Now, if you know for a fact that your game can display PlayStation buttons and can function with a PlayStation 4 controller, it just needs a little help, I will show you how to change the settings so that you can display PlayStation 4 buttons. The simple answer is, you see this little thing here? This is my PlayStation controller. And the, the selected profile is the settings profile. Right now I'm using the default one. And if I click on this edit button, it'll edit that settings profile. This is where I could click on any one of these buttons and it would bring open a menu where I could rebind it to any Xbox controller button or any one of these keyboard buttons on the screen if I wanted to. But what I want to do instead is I want to go up here. You see how there's these little tabs here above like all these different settings that are probably making your eyes glaze over. Click on other and then at the top emulated controller. It's currently emulating an Xbox 360 controller or pretending to be an Xbox 360 controller. Click it and click DualShock 4 and then click save at the top of this little settings window. Now, presto change o bingo bango, my computer now thinks that this is a PlayStation 4 controller properly. If for whatever reason it stops working in your game, because this will confuse a number of games into thinking there's nothing plugged in for a controller, then all you have to do is click on edit again. To revert this, just go back to other, and then put emulated controller back to Xbox 360 and click save, and it'll once again be pretending that this is an Xbox 360 controller. I recommend leaving it in Xbox 360 mode, even though it's a little confusing at first, because that will be the most compatible with the most programs. So anyway, that'll be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.